All right, so we got the Deathwing explained by an Australian Warhammer 40k lore. Before we get into the video, thank you guys so much for all the support over the past few days. It's been absolutely ridiculous, man. You guys have been loving the Warhammer videos, so I'm gonna keep giving them to you alongside of the game trailers and uh, other game, you know, other game genre, uh, game franchises, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna edit that out real quick, and um, let's get right to the video. Get out, guys! Thank you guys so much for all I the support, love the man. Dark Angels, especially as they were during the Great. Let's get to these menaces. Conspiracy. Modern Dark Angels can be pretty cringe at times. However, with the return of the Lion, he has whipped them back into shape, and they are once again the Giga Chads of the First Legion. However, throughout the last 10,000 years of Dark Angel history, one thing has remained consistent. The Deathwing are awesome. A chosen company of elite warriors who exist to completely destroy the enemies of the Emperor. If the Dark Angels are the Emperor's exterminators, then the Deathwing are the Dark Angels' exterminators. There are very few things that can last more than 30 seconds against the squad of Deathwing Knights. Like you'd honestly last longer with Margot Robbie than you would against anyone from the Deathwing. Before we get started, the thing about video crazy. games is that no matter what, eventually the game Yo, that's their crazy. Fate. Bad games will wither, die, and have their servers shut down. Good games last for ages. Just look at Dawn of War 1. So True. it's a testament to Tacticus that after multiple years, it's still going strong and they've even agreed to partner with me for this video. Tacticus has evolved a ton since they launched, adding in dozens of new characters. Oh, wow. New that was actually a pretty like slick ad right there. The the you next know what? Update, like, real quick, because like, he's doing an ad read right now. Um, he's right, though. A lot of, like, you know, good games, good. like like Call of Duty, a lot of, like, a lot of, like the old Call of Duty and stuff like that, bro. Yeah, bro, their online servers are still on. Like, if you want to play Call of Duty Modern Warfare, like, 2007 version, you could if you want to. So that's actually crazy that he even said that. Which is pretty true along a lot of most good games. More, with another awesome feature being the over 70 different champions you can I'm letting finish off this ad read and then we'll get right back into the video, y'all. champion coming with their own special abilities and passives. So to get in on the I like fun, his lighting and stuff like that. And use my rewards code in game to get a cheeky bonus reward. Cheers to Tacticus for sponsoring this video. Here we go. Today we'll go over the lore of the Deathwing, detailing why they look so distinct from normal Dark Angels, what their purpose is, some of their most awesome characters and moments from the lore. Uh, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Do it. Let's go, man. Shot the major kill. Dark Angels like being quite mysterious. Their order has layers of secret societies and clubs, sometimes overlapping with members not even knowing each other's identity. What, what, what? I'm sorry to pause it. What do you mean secret societies and clubs? Are we talking about... The, the, yo, don't let me find out. We got the we got the Riddy Rarty. So my bad. The Diddy Party and Warhammer. Don't let me find out. Yo, if I listen, if I walk in this scene and I see a bunch of oiled up machines, though, if listen, if I walk into the, if I walk into the space marine world, and I see all the ultramarines and, and the space marines all oiled up, don't let me find out. The dip they're sort of loose. That's Dented. crazy. This makes the Dark Angels extremely hard to infiltrate. With the we got Diddy clubs in here. The legions, the Dark Angels are one of the hardest, second only to the Space Wolves. One aspect of these segments is the Hexagrammaton, the six wings of the Dark Angels, with each wing representing a different specialization and role in the Dark Angel Legion. There was the Fire Wing, who were specialists at spying, sabotage, and assassination. The Storm Wing, that was all about storming enemy positions, using assault squads, boarding shields, and whatever else a man needs to run the gauntlet. The Iron Wing, which made up the tech marines and mech scientists of the Legion. As a bit of a fun fact, the Mechanicum actually hated the Iron Wing due to the Iron wow. Wing technology that the Mechanicum did not. Nor did the Iron Wing Jealous. share such technology. Then there was the Dread Wing, who were the destroyers of the Legion. Only the complete annihilation of the enemy would satisfy them. They even used Dreadnought who had lost their sanity. Then there was the Raven Wing, who were hit and run marines, relying on speed and skirmishing to draw the enemy out, weaken their position, or just cause a distraction. So there's not much surprise that the Raven Wing are the ones that are tasked with hunting the fallen Dark Angels. And then finally, the Death Wing, the topic of today's video. Uh -oh. Out of all the wings, only the Death Wing and Raven Wing remain. The other wings only being viable when the Dark Angels were at full Legion strength. Now the Dark oh, Angels are proud snap. of being the first Legion, and often say that the other Legions use them as a template to create their own style, and that isn't just the boast. The White Scars are similar to the Raven Wing, the Alpha Legion and Raven Guard are similar to the Fire Wing, the World Eaters are similar to the Dread Wing, and so on. The Dark Angels are capable of dealing with any situation, which is why the Emperor trusted them so deeply and relied on them to face the most complicated and powerful Makes enemies. sense. I'll put it like this. In Fulgrim's Primarch book, he took on a single, low-tier human world and made it compliant. It was a bit of an effort, he nearly died, and it unveiled a number of his flaws. In the Lion's Primarch book, he took on an ancient, mega-powerful Xeno civilization that was as old as the Necrons and even the old ones. The Xeno King was like a living god, yet the Lion still slew him, and
and his Dark Angel still managed to defeat his insanely powerful Xeno Psycho Warriors. Now we've set the scene, let's get into the Deathwing properly. Although they started as a highly specialized wing, known for their line breaking ability. So aren't these the aren't these like the fast ones, right? These are like the fast, the uh the, the like the fast fraction, right? They they rely on like speed and stuff like that. Okay, I think I think this is the one. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But if I'm right, I right. Ability and deep striking, they were excellent for situations like if the enemy overextended, then a Deathwing squad would teleport in and destroy them, swinging oh. the momentum of the battle. The Deathwing swore to never retreat or surrender. If the Deathwing were present on a battlefield, either the battle would end with the enemy defeated, or every single Deathwing Dark Angel would be dead. Even if it was more advantageous for the Dark Angels to retreat and then fight another day, the Deathwing would still remain and fight to the end. This oath is the main reason behind their name as the Deathwing. During the Heresy, oh. their role naturally evolved to be more broad, as the best Dark Angels were recruited into the Deathwing, hence brought a lot more to the table than just, Hadoo, fight to the death, brothers. They became the first company and started acting as the Lion's Honor Guard, as well as his elite warriors. Originally, their armor was black and ornate, with some of them having bone white armor plating in some areas if they ever took a mortal wound that was meant for a battle brother. And they kind of they kind of they kind of like Kratos a little bit. Seeking death in battle. Like a Kratos theme like they type of faction. Up making some of the other wings like the Dreadwing or Stormwing redundant, fulfilling the roles of line breaker and destroyer, contributing to the dissolution of those wings post heresy. The Deathwing was so highly esteemed that all members of it were allowed to learn pretty much all the secrets of the Dark Angel chapter, such as the existence of the Fallen, the betrayal of Luther, the loss of Caliban and the fate of the lion, although that last part isn't super important anymore since the Big Daddy is back. If you're wondering when they became bone white all over, it isn't because all members of the Deathwing have taken mortal wounds meant for their battle brothers, no. Basically, on a Dark Angel recruitment world, there was a major Gene Sealer infestation. A squad of Deathwing Terminators prepared to face down the Gene Sealer force and sell their lives in glorious battle. As such, they painted their entire armor bone white, as they pre-predicted that they would all receive mortal wounds, fighting side by side oh. with each other and defending each other to the end. However, amazingly, they actually survived and defeated the Gene Stealers. To honor such an epic victory, the Deathwing permanently changed their colors to bone white. Uh, they, bro, they was like, bro, listen, man, we keeping this white, bro. A white is our good luck charm. We got to keep it as white, bro. Listen, listen, listen. Who knew, bro? We got to change our stuff to white for us to live because I'm going to be honest with you. Bro, like, listen, if we didn't change our stuff to white, it would have been over for us. Hey, I can't lie to you, though. Listen, if I'm them and we went and, like, we changed our stuff white, like, we changed our uniform white and we went out we won, I'm not really into, like, superstitions or whatever but or like that. But I can't lie to you. I would definitely do that. I would definitely be like, oh, okay, well, yeah, this, bro, this color definitely worked for us. Yeah, this color's staying. I can't lie to you. And all recruits learn that tale. The Dark Angels have a shitload of Terminators in their chapter, more so than almost any other chapter, with the Deathwing being pretty much given all their suits of armor. As such, almost all members of the Deathwing wear Terminator armor into battle. However, not all. Some Deathwing wear standard Legion plate, such as the Lion Guard, as perhaps they want to have better maneuverability on the battlefield or the speed to try keep up with their Liege Lord. After yeah, all, these are the speed ones. Slow as shit. These non-Terminated Dark Angels are almost always Blade Guard veterans or some kind of non-Terminator specialist. You may have also seen the Deathwing Knights, Terminators wearing custom, even more badass Terminator armor, if that was even possible. What's the deal with these guys though? Well, they are the elite of the elite of the elite. If the Deathwing is the elite first company of the Dark Angels, then the Deathwing Knights are the elite first company of the Deathwing. Their Terminator armor is even more stacked and powerful than a normal suit, featuring inbuilt iron halos which provide a force field around them. They also carry a massive force field to battle, as well as massive maces, flails, or power swords. Becoming a Deathwing Knight is extremely difficult, and it's said that a shard of the line himself exists in each of these knights. They are also regularly accompanied by the Watchers in the Dark, which is a sign of cosmic favor. On my list of people to fuck with, the Deathwing Knights are pretty much on the bottom of it. So who are some of the most badass Wait. Deathwing Dark Angels we have seen? Wait, well, so the they're number one? The Holguin, nicknamed the Deathbringer. He was the first captain of the Dark Angels and Lionel Johnson's closest advisor. He survived things no man should survive, including all three Rangdung Xenocides, which were considered the most vicious and costly wars of the entire Great Crusade. He survived a direct fight with Conrad Kurz and was one of the only two Hexagrammaton commanders who survived the journey through the Rune Storm. He was a steadfast commander who would often challenge or disagree with the Lion if he believed his liege was wrong. Hey, he's still on business though. Was, but I do hope we see him in the scouring. Did you know that Azriel, the supreme grandmaster of the Dark Angels, was actually originally part of the Deathwing and even ascended to become the Grand Master of the Deathwing after a string of impressive victories. When the Dark Angel Chapter Master was killed by a Night Lord's Demon Prince, 
Azrael recovered his body and trapped a banner before banishing his killer, an act that solidified him as the obvious choice to become the next Supreme Grandmaster. Not to mention he was pretty much second in command anyway due to leading the Deathwing. With Azrael as Supreme Grandmaster, a dark angel called Belial ascended to now lead the Deathwing. Belial was a hyper-autistic perfectionist. Even the tiniest, most reasonable mistake he would make, he would be extremely hard on himself. Every oh, wow. shot was a failure to Belial, and even when he won great victories, all he could think about is how he could have performed better. Belial also loves. So he was like, so he was like a, he was like a, like a major like perfectionist basically. He's right. Okay. The two times he has nearly died, one was from dueling Gazkull, the most powerful orc in the galaxy, and the second time was fighting Angron. Dude has no chill. Overall, a worthy leader of the Deathwing. There really isn't many issues that cannot be sorted out by a squad of Deathwing. Bro, all about to say, bro, he didn't say one bad thing about this team. He didn't say one bad thing about this team. Don't tell me they're better than my favorite team. Because if you're saying that, it's impossible. They're not better than my team. And that's the Salamanders. <laughs> well, listen, if you don't know, now you know. They're not better than my team. Not Team Green. Not Team Money. <laughs> what are we talking about? They're not better than the Salamanders. I don't listen. I don't I don't care what you guys would say. Oh, well, you know, they're, but they're, they're, um, they are they run a, a, as fast as the Flash. Oh, well, you know, they're, they're, they're fast or whatever. Bro, they're not as, <laughs> like I said, they're not as good as my team. They're not as good as the Salamanders. They're not as good as Team Green. But we'll finish off the video. We'll finish off. Nice. Deep striking in. Your homework is too hard? Deathwing deep strike. Your girlfriend is cheating on you? Deathwing deep strike. You spend years of your life grinding away at a soulless job that you despise, constantly surrounded by co-workers you hate and a boss that is the living embodiment of condescendment, all the while wondering where it all went wrong and what you could have done differently. You live in a loveless, sexless marriage, with your children using you as an example of what they aspire to avoid. The true horror of all of it is that you are only 40, so there's up to 60 more years of this living nightmare that day by day ticks you closer to taking your own life. Deathwing Yo. deep strike. If you enjoyed the video and you want to Bro, what was that? That was a depressing ending. But listen, they're not as be they're not better than my team at all. But I can't lie to you though. Hearing like hearing their resume, hearing on like how tough they are, how fast they are, I can't lie to you. They do seem pretty intimidating, but I can't lie to you, bro. You put those guys up against my favorite faction, it's over. I promise you, bro. 180 to zero, bro. Nobody as, as a matter of fact, nobody on my team is dying. I'm just keeping it real. Comment down below, man. What do you guys think about this? Uh, if you guys were actually, I was actually thinking about like reacting to the, all the factions, like you know, explain or whatever from Major Kill. I also have some other Warhammer videos coming for you guys uh, later today as well. So make sure you guys like, comment down below, like the video, man. What do you guys think about the video? And again, thank you guys so much for watching the videos, man. I really appreciate you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it, it's crazy. I wasn't even expecting this. Um, thank you guys so much, man. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace out, y'all.